Hey guys, uh, today I just wanna, so, well, this video, I actually was planning this video for a long time, but every time I try to like properly edit videos in my editing software, my PC just blue screens. <laughs> so instead, I'm just gonna ramble a little bit, alright? So basically, what I wanna talk about is just why people seem to love Monster Hunter while hating fighting games. Uh, it's like something I've noticed in Monster Hunter discussions over the last years. And just like my opinion, why I think a lot of people love Monster Hunter, even though they like despise fighting games, but there's actually like a lot of similarities uh, between the two. And I'm just gonna like ramble, right? So basically, Monster Hunter makes use of Almost all fighting game mechanics without you having to fight like a real-life human being So the intrinsic competitiveness that comes with playing fighting games. It's like com completely gone because actually a lot of people usually like the way fighting games feel and play But they don't want to play against another human, right? It's the same with like MOBAs a lot of people actually like playing MOBAs, but like all the baggage that basically comes with it is what turns them off right so because I'm not like the youtuber guy and edit my videos and have like the footage on screen where you can see what I'm talking about unfortunately you just have to listen to what I'm saying so the first point is basically mix-up a mix-up um, is when you do an attack string right when you do attacks but you can you have two options or more. So in a fighting game, for example, I'm gonna hit you with the one, two, right? And then the third hit, I could either come from above, like an overhead, or it could be a low or a mid, right? So you need to decide, are you gonna block standing? So like the overhead is not gonna hit you and the mid isn't gonna hit, but if it's the low, you're gonna get hit. Or you block while crouching, right? That way the low won't hit, the mid won't hit, but the overhead will hit. And in the case of Monster Hunter, that would be, for example, a Raffian or Raffalos. You know how they can charge at you, right? And they can do another charge and another charge. Or they could do the tail, tail swipe where they turn around, right? But even that, they can do that twice. Or if they spit the fireball, they can do one fireball free fireballs or they can roar and turn that into a guaranteed fireball so that's basically what I mean uh, you have the option to do strings and cut off strings this I could show this better with sword and shield but like you know how I can do one two three and then do this right but I can also just do this like I can stop at any given time and that, for the most part, also applies to the monsters. You can also combine your different combos. So, if I want to do the full combo, I can do this move. One, two, three. And now I'm on the ground again and I can continue. It's up to the player, right? You have all these tools and it's up to you how you want to use them and what you want to do at any given situation. Because maybe the monster is charging at me, or like roaring, and I'm gonna do dodge into it and get free damage in. Or maybe I wanna play safe and just run around, uh, run away. Um, this is very niche, but you have the option. This is like only for Tekken, basically. But if you get hit, uh, I don't know if this can this thing hit me, or do I need to like? Ah, I think I need to turn that on. But basically, in Monster Hunter. Let me see if I can turn it on. If you get hit and you fall to the ground, you can actually stay on the... Uh, you can stay... Yes. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't know how to do this. You can stay on the ground. And as long as you're on the ground, I think there's a limit. But as long as you're on the ground, you actually won't be damaged. So it might be smarter to just stay on the ground until the enemy you're fighting, the monster you're fighting, is done with its next move and then you get up and from there on you do what you need to do um, you can learn the enemy's moveset and react accordingly 
So this is like over time, the more you fight a monster, you learn its moveset, you know which of your moves you can use it, uh, which is the best to use depending on the <laughs> move that the enemy is using. I'm, I'm fucking, I'm sorry, I'm tripping over my own words. Basically, if let's say a ref here, uh, no, what's his name? Vividion, Vovidion, the paralyzing one in Rise. When he does the fucking roll, if I dodge bolt into him, it will actually kick him back, stun him, and you get like insane amount of free damage, right? I could also just dodge, or uh, do I have the Superman jump? No. Uh, I could also just dodge or wire buck away, or maybe yeah, there's a Superman jump. Uh, maybe Wirebug, right? Uh, it's up to you. But the better you become at fighting that specific monster, the more aggressive you can be, and the more of your tools you will actually be able to utilize at any given point in the fight. There are very interesting visual designs that relate to the... F I, I said f uh, I wrote fighting style, but that's more for the fighting games, right? But a Raffian, it has a tail, it has a poison gland, so it's gonna poison you, use its tail to attack you, it has wings so it can fly, uh, it can charge at you, it has like this inflammable thing in its throat so it can spit fireballs. It Monster Hunter designs incorporate whatever the monster looks like, right? You can kind of tell from their design what they will throw at you. And that's also true for fighting games. Um, it has banger OSTs. If you don't know, fighting games have some of the best music in any video game. Maybe I'll throw something under this video, but probably not. Uh, you have actual wep weapon variety or fighter variety. Like in fighting games, there's there's little echo fighters, some people call them. Where it's basically, it's the same character, but they just look different, right? In Monster Hunter, you only have, I think it's 14 weapon types, but every weapon plays uniquely and very differently and it's the same for fighting game characters you have your shotos those are like the traditional fair honest characters you have the grapplers that don't have a lot of normal moves but they have a lot of command grabs that other characters don't have access to we have rushdown characters in the case of one that it would be kind of like the dual blades where you just keep on hitting the enemy relentlessly uh, puppeteers are a bit weird but you get my point right Every weapon is unique, every weapon uh, is very different from each other. It's not just do you want small sword or big sword. The big sword plays completely differently than sword and shield or bow or light bow gun or whatever have you. Um, you. You have some universal options, but like I'm pretty sure every weapon can just roll. Right, even with the weapon drawn. But I think not every weapon can run. I think you can run with the sword and shield, but you can't with the bow, for example. Um, there's insane amount to details. Which in fighting games, every character, every single move is like insanely detailed, like the animation. And it also aligns with the hitboxes. And in Monster Hunter, it's just... Well, Rise, <laughs> to be fair, it kind of looks... It looks a bit doo-doo but it's okay it's all right uh but yeah the, uh, i'm specifically talking about animations in one side you have the pelicos the enemies uh the world the ecosystem you know all that good jazz and then progression this is this is like my almost my last point but progression isn't tied to an experience system that you like put into skills or if you just keep playing, your character is going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. Yeah, you can craft better gear and it upgrades your character. But if the player can't beat a monster, it doesn't matter how good, your, how good your gear becomes. You will not be able to beat that specific monster, right? So it's kind of like legacy knowledge. You as the player, if you make a new save file and you're really good at Monster Hunter, you will beat every monster without any issues even though you're starting from zero because gear doesn't make that big of a difference well, it's not that of, of course it makes a difference but uh, the progression is tied to you as the player not to your character and then lastly i just wrote you know second by second decision and well-designed hit and hurt boxes for the most part 
It's just... If you wanted a more... If you want like a game where you just fight monsters, right? Why would you play Monster Hunter? There's a lot of other games where there's more spectacle, where there's, uh, in quotation marks, cooler weapons, where you have access to more skills. But that's what I'm trying to get at here. That's why I think Monster Hunter and fighting games are very similar to each other. But you don't have the intrinsic competitiveness, competitiveness of fighting games. So you basically have all the good without the bad. Yeah, that's my fucking TED talk, I guess. Um, if you watched, uh, thanks for watching. I just, I just wanted to ramble a little bit. This isn't a structured video. There won't be any editing. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Maybe I'll talk to you some other day. And real quick, if anyone that watches this wants to make like a proper video about the comparisons between fighting games and Monster Hunter with like the YouTube thing where you edit the videos and all of that shit and you show like the Raffian actually doing the moves, fucking go ahead. Okay, bye bye.